Hello, welcome. It's a great honor to give the open keynote of SMC 2020. Thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. My name is Anna Shambo and I recently joined the Montfort University. I'm part of the Music Technology and Innovation Institute for Sonic Creativity, where we explore broadly innovative music applications for music technology and so we specialize in electroacoustic music and sonic art. I would like to start this talk exploring the synergies between sound and music computing and human computer interaction. So there is this recent publication uh, published at SMC 2020 which looks into 16 years of SMC. This paper is by Mauro et al. And so it explores the different topics that have been covered throughout the years and trends. And it starts defining what sound and music computing is and how it started. I will read it aloud. By choosing this name, the proponents intended to go beyond the term computer music, which was interpreted primarily from a music perspective and to define a discipline in computer science. If we look into the Association for Computing Machinery Classification from 1998, we see how sound and music computing is classified under information interfaces and presentation. And just to clarify, this classification is used for both indexing and retrieval of computing uh, uh, papers and articles. Now in 2012, ACM proposed a new classification where sound and music computing uh, was moved to applied computing uh, and arts and humanities. Back to this uh, Mauro et al. paper, um, it is um, kind of uh, as a, one of the conclusions, SMC is a broad discipline that ranges, touches different uh, topics and uh, this kind of variety then makes it difficult to classify um, uh, properly or in a taxonomy. So it's just to raise that it's a multidisciplinary uh, field. But moving a little bit up, what is HCI? Uh, as a definition, human computer interaction can be defined as a discipline concerned with the design, evaluation, and implementation of interactive computing systems for human use. And I would like to stress this human use aspect and also the design and evaluation uh, part of the workflow. And also it concern with, uh, concerns the study of major phenomena surrounding them. If we look into this other term, computer supported cooperative work, uh, it refers to the understanding of how computer systems can support group activities. So here we see uh, a matrix that has been borrowed from the computer supported cooperative work literature and Alvaro Barbosa adapted to musical uh, interfaces and applications where we see these two dimensions, time and space. That means that activities in group can happen uh, co-located and remote and synchronous versus asynchronous. So then we can find here four uh, scenarios that are possible uh, throughout this collaboration that can happen to be a musical collaboration. So this talk is a personal journey uh, ranging or starting from uh, the creation of music prototypes that I will explain in a minute, then moving to bringing this collaborative participatory layer uh, when building music experiences and will end to this present time of exploring collaboration and participation building uh, music ecosystems. So music prototypes. Um, here you can see a poster that I presented uh, in my first summer school, which happened to be in 2008 in Genoa, and it was the SMC summer school. Uh, so it's nice to be back to Italy, even though virtually. Uh, and so in this poster I was presenting, the point was to show sketching um, 
music as an alternative way of interacting uh, compared to desktop um, interaction or mouse driven interaction. And so the idea was to present different prototypes that we were building uh, during this master. Um, so the first prototype built together with Gerard Roma is a pen based interaction um, prototype where you could draw sound waves on an electronic board. In this case, we could build it on the same uh, laptop using um, a kind of a, a handmade or custom low cost physical uh, light pen that uh, was working with infrared and captured with an infrared camera as well. But basically you, what you could do here, we could demonstrate that you could draw directly with a pen on the screen. And that was a, yes, a spectrographic uh, sequencer. A second prototype that uh, was kind of exemplifying this approach of uh, sketching music was the wavetable that we also built with Gerard Roma when we were studying the master. And this started as a course work and then we continued uh, along and we presented it during NIME that same year, which happened to uh, be located just right before the SMC uh, summer school. And so this is built using the reactable uh, class um, approach that I'll explain in a minute. But basically here you could uh, kind of, uh, you could have a hands-on um, sound wave editor where you could edit the wave or you could draw it and then erase it and modify it and apply effects but uh, using this uh, tangible interaction. And the third prototype was uh, based on mobile interaction. Uh, here there is a pocket sequencer which is based on a yeah, basic sequencer uh, with a matrix that of different sliders that you could modify pitch and volume. This, uh, for my master thesis, uh, turned to be or became a kind of a, a, a sampler where you could have four tracks and record them on the on the on the go and modify the tracks. And in both cases, um, uh, I, w I was using PDA, which was a version for mobiles of PD. And the main point here was to also explore interaction on the move, on the go, uh, with mobile phones. And so, uh, in terms of evaluation or how to assess these prototypes, uh, it was very much based on this human-centered design process. And this diagram comes from Don Norman's fantastic book, The Design of Everyday Things where there is this cycle of idea generation, you then prototype and then give it to users to test, observe the kind of the uses and feedback, and then that informs uh, back to the new cycle of again, idea generation, prototyping and so on and so forth. However, it was really an open question how to evaluate these kind of systems and this kind of interaction, um, which is, um, uh, kind of rich in terms and varied and, and complex uh, and to what extent and how um, um, it was possible to borrow HCI method, research methods and, and what would be the kind of the parameters to look at. These were all open questions. And in a way you could see it as uh, establishing a bridge between on the left the common uh, a course book that we had during the master human computer interaction uh, with great uh, readings and papers on formal HCI studies and on the on the right you would have this roadmap for sound and music computing uh, which was also at the time uh, and understood as a like a roadmap a way of seeing the future or like a how this promising field uh, was going to satisfy the needs of society and so all the promises. So there was kind of a need to bridge uh, both fields. The good news is that uh, authors such as Bill Buxton explore extensively this uh, bridge and, and inform theoretically also uh, how uh, music and music interaction 
can inform HCI. And so he talked about in this seminal article, Artist and the Art of the Luthier, he mentioned about this, um, the artist spec. And basically, if you could satisfy the artist spec uh, or specification, that means this artistic interaction, all these complexities and gestures, then uh, everything else would be easy. And mention also uh, Sergi Jordan, who follow up this path. And here you see um, on the right his uh, PhD work uh, and this term he coined digital literary, which basically uh, refers to those who create digital musical instruments. And in his thesis, explored and uh, thoroughly what are the characteristics of these um, digital musical instruments but also what shall we keep from acoustic instruments, what should we improve, and also what digital musical instruments and computers are bringing new. Um, and one aspect uh, raised is this uh, collaboration uh, due to this multi-threading that is possible with computers, but also all of a sudden you have uh, numerous parameters and then uh, sharing those parameters is a way also to uh, divide this complexity. So the reactable, as you may know, uh, was kind of a, well, part, it came part of, of this research and it was built at, at uh, UPF uh, by Jordan, Geiger, Alonso and Carlton Brunner. And basically, yeah, it brings all this notion of what a digital musical instrument is, uh, taking uh, the good from the acoustic instruments, bringing also the good from the digital musical instruments. And well, you see on the right uh, diagram that explains or outlines how this uh, system work is based on this tangible interaction where you have objects on a surface uh, to control the data, but also to show um, or represent uh, the values of, of, of the data. Uh, and then also behind uh, the scenes, you can see there is a, a computer vision system that tracks these objects. And then we have different modules for the audio, for the visuals, um, and so on. And this also is another characteristic of DMI about separating control and, and audio output. But then back uh, to this matrix of uh, computer supported collaborative uh, music applications. Um, just to mention then that uh, collaboration or collaborative musical applications can be seen as, an, as exemplary of digital musical instruments because basically explore this new potential that DMIs uh, offer. And that's uh, what we will keep exploring in the remaining of the talk. So moving to the second part, and as part of my PhD research, um, I moved to yeah, this exploration of interactive musical tabletops and how to study them. And so the problem space was to study not only the artifact, the tabletop, uh, but also the musicians, uh, which were more than one, so a group, and therefore also the collaboration and the music produce but also the observers and the audience. And so the open question was how to um, study this social interaction uh, in this uh, new setting. So two uh, key references for um, creating this theoretical framework to understand this new phenomena are these two books uh, and authors you see here on the left, uh, Where the Action Is by Paul Dorish who has coined this term embodied interaction in order to explain this tangible interaction, but also this social interaction and this um, co-creation uh, of meaning during these hands-on activities. And on the right, Plans on Situated Actions by Lucy Suckman, who is proposing the notion of situated action um, as uh, a term that refers to the creation of meaning when a particular action is happening with particular group of actors in a particular 
moment of time using a particular piece of technology. And so both uh, references help to frame the kind of uh, what I like to term embodied music interaction, uh, where you can see here a diagram of different uh, ways where the body uh, is part of this interaction with the technology ranging from tangible to mobile interaction to wearable and laptop and out of the different characteristics here I would like to highlight the shareability um, property which uh, all these um, this DMIs support in a way or in another so putting all these pieces together we will see now a few examples um, of each of, uh, of these modalities. So first study was the one you will see here uh, with expert musicians and how they were using the reactable over time and what happened. And so the research methods used here was video analysis uh, which is a common research method in social sciences. Uh, but looking into musical tabletops and musical interaction on tabletops. And so through this video analysis and recording all these sessions, uh, we had several findings. One was the beginning of the experience. The groups were misusing the objects, as we've seen in the video. But later on, we developed complex techniques, as this preview technique is here. example uh, still with the reactable but in the museum. So the idea was also to bring the video recordings there and observe how reactable was used in, in this um, informal context. So the kind of interactions uh, would be as the one you see at the bottom left. So we were expecting those but then uh, after observing or viewing these uh, video recordings we found out that there was also in-between interactions or in-between group interactions where one group, as you can see here, would uh, leave one patch working. So this is uh, playing actually and after a while another group came, for instance, and continued the, the patch, so continued the music. So that's why you can see this as an example of a synchronous um, co-located uh, collaboration. And so the way also of analyzing or doing research uh, is what we call, or it's called uh, research in the wild. So the idea is that you go in the wild to gather uh, a real world experience. So moving to another example, in this case we move to remote synchronous interaction. And here the idea is to explore uh, ear sketch which uh, has been uh, developed at Georgia Tech and is a web-based software based on the digital audio workstation metaphor where uh, students and users can basically uh, learn to uh, code by making music so you can program all these different tracks and so it supports live coding. So this study here we implemented a chat uh, and also a shareable um, script so that you could uh, join with different live coders and edit the same code uh, in this script. And so we use, as you can see, Firepad and Firechat for this. And so this video is about three coders, live coders that are speaking in here, and they are the three located in three different rooms and cities and we analyzed um, this um, kind of this experience using autoethnography and so reflecting back uh, how we uh, experience the life coding together.
This is another example, uh, moving to asynchronous remote, and you will see it in a minute, and on wearables. So uh, this project was uh, done at uh, Queen Mary University of London, and it involved three main teams, the e-textiles team, with us Sophie Scaff and Becky Stewart, and then the Internet of Musical Things, with Luca Turquette and Mathieu Bartet, and the Audio Commons team uh, with Ariane Stolfi, Mathieu Bartet, and myself representing the, the project. And basically here we uh, were exploring the notion of having a hoodie uh, with um, sensors attached to the hoodie uh, that could modify by gestures uh, sounds downloaded from the internet uh, in essence. And we were using uh, Bella for this, so that it could be an embedded um, experience. So, we can see the video here. <laughs> and the way of evaluating this experience, we uh, borrowed and adapted the a method called uh, technology probes, where you create workshops and let create uh, like this showrooms, showcases. People can uh, wear and explore the interface, and then, or, or in this case, the experience, and then provide feedback. So we adapted this. Okay, another example which is slightly different but still in this matrix is collocated synchronous. It's bringing the participation, and I can already show the video, but basically there's with web audio all these new possibilities of creating uh, mobile applications and create uh, music and, and then involve um, the audience for that. So um, together with Gerard Roma, we've um, just written this paper exploring this approach of performing audiences and we just created uh, 13 dimensions trying to understand the pieces that we've been uh, creating in the past uh, but also in order to understand future pieces or create future pieces or evaluate them and these dimensions include uh, the interaction between or role between the performers and the audience performers uh, but also it looks into the technology, the role of the technology, the role of the, um, the computer system, and so reflecting back uh, on this um, period in a way, uh, as you've seen, uh, research methods. Uh, sometimes you need new research methods, basically to understand new phenomena. And so this continuum here represents um, a way of exploring these new research methods, um, depending uh, of what you want to re do research on. Uh, this is inspire or, yeah, this continuum comes from research uh, together with uh, Kerry Dewitt and Sarah Price, where we were looking into uh, commonalities and differences between research methods in social sciences and the digital arts when exploring the body. Uh, but that this um, continuum can also be applied to other um, domains where you need research methods. But basically, to uh, give an example of it, we've seen that you can expand um, a research method uh, just uh, staying in the same context as we've seen with video analysis and musical tabletops or you can resituate um, an existing method in a new context, um, as we've seen with the in the wild research, where it's still uh, ethnography, but you're moving or to the wild and you're exploring uh, a new practice, uh, as opposed to ethnography that would uh, observe existing practices. Transferring uh, an existing method to a new discipline is another approach, as we've seen with uh, life coding and the autoethnography. Uh, we are just moving the ethnography uh, to a new um, um, discipline, which is uh, life coding and music making. Finally, generating new methods. Uh, 
technology props would be the perfect example where you combine cultural props approach together with workshops and, and showrooms and, and that kind of uh, combination where you're creating a new method. And yes, that's a uh, takeaway message of, of this um, phase uh, is that basically uh, for new phenomena you might need new research methods that do not exist. So, um, to move on, HCI and SMC are two disciplines that are based on technology and they move uh, and change uh, rapidly. And so we need to also adapt to these new changes. So this is um, Being Human, uh, another roadmap uh, that was uh, published in 2008, looking forward about HCI and how all these um, uh, social, social technical transformations uh, would change the behaviors and the way of approaching new technologies and also for us designers of these new experiences uh, and ecosystems uh, we need to be aware of and consider. And that ranges from ubiquitous computing and the interface that is everywhere or this pervasive um, hyperconnectivity where you are connected all the time and invading that invades both uh, the not the public sphere only but also the private sphere or artificial intelligence and how it is um, uh, kind of um, uh, in a way being more present in all the disciplines so how and then the interaction with artificial intelligent agents how to control them and not uh, then uh, not they controlling us. So this is a kind of discussions that uh, we need to be aware. So the fourth wave NTI is a current discussion. Uh, first of all, whether there is a fourth wave in HCI and secondly, how it looks like, what are the characteristics. And so in the discussions, which are open as I mentioned, uh, it is mentioned that uh, uh, values need to be considered, uh, uh, ethics need to be considered, uh, and so on. So here I would like to highlight three perspectives that I think are interesting to consider uh, moving the field forward. One is sustainable interaction design and the idea of bringing uh, sustainability when we design and evaluate systems. So that means also considering the community, uh, considering the long-term um, design of, of, of um, the artifacts we build. Feminist HCI uh, also is an important aspect to consider and that means feminism not only as a, an analytical tool but also as part of this process of designing and evaluating experiences and ecosystems. It's a, a, a lens uh, uh, that we can use uh, last but not least, the colonizing HCI, this connects very well with all this social justice and a kind of when building tools, uh, empowering those voices that maybe um, uh, lack the knowledge to build those tools or uh, lack the kind of the platforms to build those tools, uh, but basically reconsidering and reflecting about um, the tools we build and whether all the voices are represented. Um, as a couple of examples of work that I've been involved lately that take this approach, one is this uh, Wanna Mute network that I uh, started when I was at NTNU and University of Oslo, where we created this edition of Wanna Mute seminar series and interviews, inviting um, great expert uh, uh, women in music technology and um, so you can find the interviews and the seminars online. And so we created this space uh, of discussion and community. Uh, the interviews were led by Carolina Jawad, who is a master's student at NTNU. Uh, she's now writing her thesis inspired by these topics and I'm uh, supervising um, this work. And so um, this is part of um, her kind of early findings, uh, you, you can have a look at the publication of her master thesis, which will be this summer. But um, just to highlight 
Uh, she conducted an online survey gathering more than 100 uh, voices um, asking about uh, gender HCI and for audio and music hardware, in particular whether uh, we perceive gender when uh, interacting with music technology. And so, as you can see in this uh, continuum uh, that Karina is working on, interestingly, you find uh, in the spectrum all these different artifacts, but none belong to this or are perceived as female or female, uh, predominantly female. That's an interesting finding. But yes, keep an eye on uh, the research and this actually, so this research was informed by all these interviews and this community that we um, uh, created and it will inform, hopefully, uh, industry, academia, uh, in a next stage. Another project is this Milk Auto, a virtual agent for music information retrieval in live coding, which is a collaboration with Eclectic, Leicester, Hackspace, Reseg, Phonos, and MTI. Um, and it's awarded with an EPSRC HDI Network Plus grant. Basically here we are exploring collaboration with a virtual agent, uh, but also what would be then this nature of collaboration with, with this virtual agent, who controls who, um, all this will be explored, but also different levels of collaboration will be explored because um, we, it's built on top of a tool, an existing tool already in MILK, which is basically gathering sounds from free sound and this connects to this notion of um, asynchronous uh, remote collaboration with uh, users who provided this big database. So, and then we will share the tools through workshops and concerts, so also keep an eye on it. I would like to conclude with uh, a quote by Margaret Atwood and also connecting with her fantastic keynote at CHI 2014. And this notion of science fiction informing technology and technology informing uh, science fiction and this mutual interaction, which I think um, speaks to how HCI and SMC inform each other. And so we are agents of change. We uh, have the tools to do so, uh, but we also have the responsibility to do so and we can basically create a better future. And I think that's uh, what I wanted to say. Now we can move from this asynchronous remote uh, interaction to a synchronous remote interaction. So I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Thank you for listening. Andrea, I have the same question. One, two, three, four. Ah, all right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Haralan Po Saitis or Harris uh, Saitis uh, from the Center for Digital Music at Queen Mary University of London. I'm one of the uh, scientific chairs for this year's uh, virtual SMC. Um, so uh, good to see everyone and thank you for participating. I see we have about 120 people watching right now. That's great. And uh, as a reminder, um, during the live Q&A sessions, please poster your um, questions on the YouTube. 
um, live chat and I will try to summarize um, as I talk with uh, Anna. Um, and first of all, uh, welcome Anna to SMC 2020 and thank you very much for this uh, very inspiring um, keynote presentation. Um, I will I will start I guess with with a question uh, which is similar to Andrea. So Andrea and I kind of had the same uh, question immediately. So uh, you just talked towards the end of your talk about gender perception. Um, so gender encoding in music HCI. Um, could you elaborate a bit on the perceived gender based cues? Yes, sure. So hi, welcome. Well, well, thank you. <laughs> Um, so basically, well, this, as I said, is work from Karolina Zawad, and so I will talk on, on her behalf. Maybe she's in the chat and might would like to add a uh, comment. But um, gender perception in music HCI, or is, yeah, seeing whether these artifacts, and in this case, audio hardware, which is what Karolina is uh, bringing as a new um, uh, object to observe, is whether, what, what, whether we... Uh, perceive them with a certain gender and that means so do we perceive it as neutral object or does it uh, is it perceived as male uh, oriented object or female um, um, oriented object and so uh, the main cues you were asking one is shape um, whether rounded shapes or square shapes that can maybe um, incline um, the user to see it in one way or in another, but also color. Um, and yeah, Karina was mentioning that the white colors tend to be more seen as more neutral or more fe like uh, yeah, uh, uh, femi uh, female uh, objects rather than perhaps black colors. Or, but yeah, this would be a kind of cue. Also, the wording uh, might also influence the wording that context that, that includes the the naming or the yeah the naming of the artifact of the product, but also maybe how you sell that product. So it's quite a yeah um, complex world, and that's what uh, Carolina is exploring at the moment. Maybe she's she's there, and Carolina, <laughs> do you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, great. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for for this um, and it's very interesting actually um, uh, the this kind of connection with shapes um, and gender um, uh, so uh, another uh, question I would like to ask is about um, in in the earlier part of your talk um, your work on collaborative um, collaborative art, collaborative um, interaction. Um, have you uh, thought about or even done work on applying this for, let's say, um, uh, collaboration between um, uh, someone with a sensory impairment, let's say a visual impaired person or a hearing impaired person, and somebody um, that is normally sighted or normally hearing? So um, a collaboration aimed to help the sensory impaired um, and how collaborative art could um, work towards that direction. Yeah, so that's a uh, thing. So even though I have not worked myself uh, with uh, particular communities, um, um, uh, during the research with uh, Reactable, uh, we were exploring this idea of the multimodality or how to um, give information using different modes, not only the um, auditory mode, but also visual mode, uh, and even the haptic mode, as a way of satisfying different ways of perceiving and understanding information. And it's, uh, I mean, you can find research and collaboration with um, particular uh, communities, but yes, it's a topic I'm interested in, in exploring more, but yeah, the abstract answer would be using uh, different modalities seems to be a way of um, supporting uh, different um, um, kind of um, ways of perceiving. But yes, thanks for the question. Thank you for the for the answer. Um, I, I'm trying to see if there are any more questions in the, the on YouTube. Um, I think uh, a couple of uh, attendees are asking if they can somehow access the bibliography 
of the talk, but I think um, people can go back and look. I mean, this this videos will be um, streamed on demand, uh, so people can go back and uh, find out the information um, they need. Um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, or I I'm happy to share the. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. So it's. It may, I'm happy to share the like the reference list uh, either to it can go together with the video and or also on my website I'm, I can share the list the bibliography list okay that's great yeah I think uh, people can contact you perhaps directly um, great um, so I think uh, there's I don't see any more questions. Um, I don't know if uh, my colleagues um, at SMC have some questions they would like to ask. Okay, it seems that there are no more questions, so maybe we can uh, conclude here um, this is this was really really interesting and um, I'm also personally interested in um, exploring um, cross-model um, associations that are very characteristic of auditory cognition um, and this could be explored both in artistic but also in more let's say healthcare well-being um, scenarios um, so yes um, I think uh, that's it thank you very much again Thank you, Charis. Um, it, it was great having you. Um, and uh, thanks to uh, our tech, uh, Carlo, and to uh, Andrea and Simone for uh, this wonderful effort. Um, and uh, we will be continuing uh, in a few minutes with the with the next um, uh, session. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.